This is Andy Gutierrez from StarWars.com, and you are listening to Coffee with Kenobi with Dan Z. This is the podcast you're looking for. This is Ashley Eckstein, Ahsoka Tano from Star Wars The Clone Wars and Star Wars Rebels, and you're listening to Coffee with Kenobi with Dan Z. Hello, my friends, and welcome to Coffee with Kenobi. This is your spoiler-free place for Star Wars community and conversation. I'm your host, Dan Zare, thrilled to be talking Star Wars with each and every one of you. Whether you are a fan of Star Wars films, the Disney Plus live action animation, books, comics, collectibles, or Star Wars opportunities at the Disney theme parks, you are among friends as we virtually share a cup of coffee together while talking about this galaxy far, far away. You can support Coffee with Kenobi by following the show on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, Pinterest, and TikTok, and subscribing to the YouTube channel. Help spread the word by tweeting that you're listening, share it on Facebook, or invite your friends and family to tune in and share a cup of coffee with us. CWK is a proud member of the Spreaker Prime program. Thank you to the official travel partner of Coffee with Kenobi, MEI and Mouse Fan Travel. If you are interested in a no-cost, no-obligation quote for your next vacation, check out coffeewithkenobi.com slash mousefantravel and let them know Coffee with Kenobi and Dan Zare sent you. Thank you also to members of the CWK Alliance. Find out how you can join the Alliance for as little as $1 a month and get access to exclusive podcasts, videos, and much more at coffeewithkenobi.com slash CWK Alliance. On today's show, we have a special treat for you. New York Times bestselling author Sam Maggs is here to talk about the brand new book, Star Wars Jedi Battle Scars. And if you're going to Star Wars Celebration London in a couple of weeks, you can see me live on the podcast stage. It is Friday, April 7th from 4 o'clock to 5 o'clock p.m., on the Holonet News stage in Room 14. I hope to see you all there as we'll be talking live with New York Times bestselling author Adam Christopher. So pull up a chair, grab your favorite coffee mug, and let's have some coffee with Kenobi. Joining us today for a cup of coffee is bestselling author Sam Maggs to talk about the brand new Star Wars book, Star Wars Jedi Battle Scars. Sam, welcome to Coffee with Kenobi. Oh, thanks so much for having me. I'm excited to be here. Yes, we're we're very excited to chat with you. Uh, the new book is spectacular. Oh, so thanks. much good buzz about already. Oh my, absolutely, my pleasure. And I just want to ask you a couple of things. First, uh, when when did you when did your appreciation for Star Wars first happen? And what is it about the mythology that continues to inspire? Oh yeah, I was sort of born into the fandom. My parents actually went to see A New Hope back in the seventies in the theaters. 22 times. Wow. <laughs> um, I was just talking about this with them last night and they said they went on opening day to see Empire and they went like hours early because they thought there was going to be a huge line. There was no line. There was nobody else in the theater. And then they stayed and watched it a second time <laughs> right oh. after it ended. <laughs> so anyway, parents, big dorks, very into Star Wars. Uh, and I guess instead of rebelling and getting into sports or something, I just kind of went with it. <laughs> um, and I've, I've always loved it. I think there's so much potential in the mythology and in the universe, like it's such a vast and incredibly rich world for mining for stories. The, you know, setup of the light versus dark is so universal, but there's so much nuance in it with Star Wars. And I think that that is what is most interesting to me to explore. Star Wars has always been wonderful about creating really lovable characters too. I mean, character is always my favorite part of any kind of story. Um, and so I think I really gravitate towards that. That's great. There, there's really nothing quite as, as fun for me as an English teacher as talking to authors anyway, because I love, I love the way that authors look at things and process things. I think that very much comes through in your writing, not only with Star Wars, but other works too. Oh, thank you. Yeah, that um, that means a lot to me. I really appreciate it. And uh, it's it's the most important thing to me. So thanks. Absolutely. <laughs> my, my pleasure. Uh, so tell us about when you first learned, of course, you've worked on a lot of books for a lot of IPs and you create a lot of amazing things in your own right. But when you first learned about right, that you were going to write Star Wars Jedi Battle Scars, walk us through that moment. Oh, gosh. Well, I had been a huge fan of the game. The second I finished playing it, I tweeted, like, who's writing the Marin book? Let me write it. <laughs> so I had been I had been really 
invested in these characters and in this story. And I got an email from my editor, Tom Holler, over at um, Del Rey, now Random House Worlds, back uh, over a year ago now at this point, uh, being like, hey, Lucasfilm and Respawn really want to do a Fallen Order book. You were my first choice for it do you have time? Would you be interested? And I melted down about it. I just melted <laughs> down because, you know, it, it, Fallen Order is just catnip for me. It's a ragtag space crew going against the big evil empire. It's found family. It's a bunch of weird dorky losers with trauma. Like they, these are all my favorite things. <laughs> um, and the opportunity to explore Marin further, especially was just so appealing to me. Uh, and so I, I obviously jumped on it right away. I, I really, I had a real fangirl moment about it. <laughs> it was big That's, for me. That will absolutely, and, and rightfully so. In hearing you explain <laughs> it, it, it makes me realize uh, how wonderfully um, it, there's a connection, not a con an immediate connection, of course, there are different things, but it just reminds me of Guardians of the Galaxy when you said it that way. Oh, totally. I mean, it also has like Mass Effect vibes. It has mm -hmm. Firefly vibes. That's that sort of um that's really my favorite kind of story especially in space <laughs> well my next question was were you a fan of jedi fallen order but i feel like i i already know the answer to that oh yeah i loved the game it was just i mean it was so well executed i, I, I you know it sold like 30 million copies now it's it's beloved with good reason um, the, the gameplay is great. It feels great, but of course, you know, the characters are so compelling and, and that just, I just wanted to hang out with them more. The game finished and I was like, I want to know what these guys are up to. <laughs> like what happens to them now? You know, I want to hang out with my friends more. I want to see Grease put more salt on his food. Um, <laughs> you know, <laughs> it was now, so when you were playing it, when, for me, uh, I'm, I've reached this point in my life where my son is suddenly way better at video games. I mean, it just sort of happened overnight. So I like had to go and watch some of the walkthroughs and things to kind of figure out certain things, but there, there are certain sections of the game that were more challenging oh, for you. Oh my gosh. The traversal for me is such a challenge. I, yes. I feel like in that game, I never know where I'm going. <laughs> I'm backtracking on myself all the time. I'm always lost. I'm always looking up a video about where to go, which is not a fault of the game, but it's purely me being unable to follow a map. <laughs> right. I feel better yes, about I'm myself. With you. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you're not the one alone. thing I know, I can turn on the lightsaber and I know that's going to work and that makes me happy. Yes, absolutely. And the force too, like, feels so satisfying um, yes. when playing that game. It, like, it really. It really makes you feel you're, like you're a Jedi. I think the the most that any Star Wars game ever has, in my opinion. No, I agree with that. I completely, in fact, my son and I were talking about that recently. It's just, there are some games that just kind of take it to that level. So let's yeah. talk about uh, Battle Scar specifically. Where does it take place in relation to the first game? Yeah, so it takes place uh, right in between Jedi Fallen Order and Jedi Survivor. So it's about a couple of years after Fallen Order and a couple of years before Survivor. So some time has passed, but there's still some time after this uh, that's going to lead up to the beginning of the game. But this really sets the scene for that. That's great. And we'll definitely leave it at that for people to get excited about if they haven't started reading it already. So obviously we're talking about uh, fall in order and we haven't talked about Cal Kestis yet. What do you like about writing this character? And what did you learn about him through the process of of creating this work? Cal was so interesting because he's such an earnest character. You get that so much in the first game. And what I really wanted to dive into getting into like more of Cal's interiority is he's been through so much horrible stuff. <laughs> His life has been pretty brutal. Um, he's lost a lot of people that he loves. He's been on the run. He's been in hiding. Like, how does someone who's been through that kind of stuff and that kind of trauma come out so earnest and like wholesome and sweet <laughs> as Cal is? And like, what motivates that? But also like, in what ways does that manifest in ways that are harmful to Cal? You know, a lot of Jedi don't really deal with trauma effectively because their whole thing is like, don't feel any negative emotions, which like not healthy no. <laughs> actually can't process things well that way. Um, so that was really interesting to me. And like, 
how did he end up so earnest, but also in what ways is that stopping him from being able to truly heal? Very interesting. Uh, so then how does Battle Scars enhance the sequel to Jedi Fallen Order or maybe some of that you can't even really share? Well, I, I think I can to a certain extent. I mean, you've probably seen in a lot of the trailers that Jedi Survivor has a bit of a darker tone to the first game. Also that some of our favorite friends and family have not appeared super much in the trailers, which I know a lot of folks have commented on. I think Survivor starts in a really interesting place that Battle Scars sets up in that, you know, even when you love people, being confined to close quarters with them for a number of years will create some tension. <laughs> you know, people will butt heads. And these guys are doing a really big, hard thing. And they're all doing this big, hard thing for different reasons and potentially, you know, with a different outcome in mind and that's eventually going to creep up on them you can't avoid having those big hard conversations forever about why you're here and what you're doing and for what reasons and that tension is bound to build up and boil over uh, and that's mm -hmm. kind of we start to see the start of that I think in battle scars leading into you know a place that that's going in survivor well, speaking of the other characters, let's talk about some of the other characters in Battle Scars. How much of the game did you have to refer back to, and how much did this new story help to shape them? Oh, yeah, a ton. I mean, it was great to work with Respawn directly when shaping the story for this game because I got a lot of their original character documentation for the Mantis crew, so I could kind of see what they envisioned for uh, character backstory, emotion, personality you know, where all of that kind of came from. They were also really wonderful in sitting down and giving me a whole, um, you know, PowerPoint presentation about the story of Jedi Survivor. So I knew where everybody was going. I knew, I knew what that story was going to be. And then they also provided me with a one sheet um, of what they really wanted me to touch on in Battle Scars particularly. So, you know, um, particular story points that needed to be hit on before Survivor, um, as well as, Certain character details, I think the biggest one would probably be Marin's pansexuality. That was something that Respawn had um, sort of established in the first game through dialogue. Mm. Hard to really do that. Um, a video game doesn't often give the space uh, for that, especially with a, a secondary character, it, to kind of establish that in a way that doesn't feel clunky, <laughs> you sure. know? Uh, so they, they were like, we've always envisioned her as pansexual. We want to be sure that the book... Um, you know, says that in no uncertain terms so that that can be canon. Uh, so there were a lot of things like that. So I had a lot of help from Lucasfilm and the Respawn team along the way in terms of uh, the broader points of where it had been going, what the story needed to do and where it needed to lead to, which was really helpful. Yeah, that makes that makes sense. And I've always continually fascinated by the organic process of how that all comes together, too. It's, it's really neat. Uh, so obviously in Battle Scars, there are so many details that fans of Jedi Fallen Order are going to absolutely love. Are there are certain ones that were particularly pleasing for you. Oh, yeah. I loved making um, Grease salting his food jokes. That was great. Uh, <laughs> I loved making fun of Cal's pink poncho, which was delightful. <laughs> Um, but in a more serious way, what I really, really loved were writing the action scenes. Uh, it, you know, in my day job, I'm a video game writer. And so, and I had obviously loved playing the game. And so it was really important to me to, as much as possible, keep Cal's moveset in the book as close to the moveset that he has in actual gameplay as possible. Because I wanted people to be able to read the book and be like, oh, I remember doing that. Or I've seen Cal do that. Or I can picture that. I know how that feels when I do that and I wanted it to be sort of canon that these are his, you know, actual moves that it's not just like video game mechanic. Um, so that was really, really fun. I always had YouTube videos on of Cal's moves um, and of, you know, Haxian Brood's move set and armor and weaponry and uh, making sure that they matched up as close to one-to-one -one as possible was, was really fun. I, and I think like, I think it makes it feel as much like the game as, as I could. And I got to say that, that, that again, you know, putting on my day hat of a, of a teacher of writing and mythology, that was one of the most impressive things to me because 
describing to me when I describe a music, it's hard for me to do that because I don't think musically, but I've played yeah. video games. Now you've taken it to another level because you're writing and creating these, you play them and you're a great writer. So what a, what a wonderful meta opportunity to just kind of find out how you plot those things out. Cause that's not easy. That's exactly how I felt about it. To be honest. Um, it was a cool exercise in describing the things that I, I take for granted in games mm -hmm. often. Um, I think I was able to use a lot of the language that we do use when working with designers um, or that designers use when talking to writers, which was cool. But it was, you know, I don't get to do that a lot. So it was really fun. I think it was probably one of the reasons or one of the reasons, excuse me, that um, they had initially approached me on this book also, you know? Yes. Uh, so I, th I think that was really neat. It was cool. Oh, I bet, I bet it was a great process, I, I have no doubt. So this is actually a perfect little segue. Uh, I was going to ask you, what advice do you have for aspiring writers? My advice is always the same. You need to write something and you need to finish it. And then you need to move on and write something else mm -hmm. and then finish it. The only way that people are ever going to get an idea of your voice, your tone, what kind of stories you like to tell, what you're bringing to the table is to be able to show people something that's finished. Um, mm. A lot of the time people say, I want to be a writer, I want to be a writer, but they can never kind of get past that hump of writing something and finishing it and having that thing to show people, whether it be a short story you can put online, whether it be um, an opinion piece that you can shop around to uh, websites that are looking for submissions, uh, you know, whether that be a twine game that you build yourself, um, you know, any anything that you can finish and show people is super necessary. You, cut, you need to build yourself a bit of a portfolio, you know, in order to yes. show that to folks. Listening to Coffee with Kenobi, you are with Dan Z, the podcast you're looking for. This is... <laughs> That's exactly what I tell my students. Put yourself in a position so that when the opportunities come your way, you're ready for them because you've done the work, you've done the practice, you've done the preparation and you've kind of anticipated the challenges that will inevitably come your way when you're following your passion project or anything that you do. I really love that because I, I feel that this business is, you know, part hard work and part luck. And, mm -hmm. you know, you have to have done the hard work to your point so that you can be ready for when the lucky thing comes to you. Um, but you also have to know that like, it is part luck, part networking, part putting yourself out there. Like that is all part of the business of writing as well, as much as it sucks and I'm terrible. <laughs> but um, unfortunately true. <laughs> and I absolutely, I totally agree with you. So now uh, I guess I want to ask you, uh, what new projects do you have in the works that you're able to talk about? Oh yeah, I'm working on a bunch of stuff right now that is currently unannounced, but I do have I do have a story in an anthology that comes out next month called First Year Orientation, which is a series of short stories by uh, you know popular YA writers about students in their first year of college in the dorms. So I have a fun I have a fun story in that. I also have an original graphic novel called Tell No Tales, Pirates of the Southern Seas that you can pick up now um, that we are going to be starting to work on a sequel for. So you can grab that. Um, but otherwise, pick up Star Wars Jedi Battle Scars available from fine booksellers everywhere uh, right now. <laughs> That's right. Anywhere you purchase your books online, you will be able to find it. Well, Sam, thank you so very much thank for being so a guest much, on Coffee Dan. with Kenobi. Yeah, it was an this absolute was great. pleasure to talk to you. Yeah, and I like Such a blast. Yeah, I like I love, of course, the Star Wars aspect is certainly up coffee with Kenobi's Alley. But again, as a teacher and, and someone who tries to ki teach kids writing, I always like hearing other professional writers' perspectives. So thank you for sharing them. Thank you for what you do. It's it, That's huge and uh, incredible. Yeah. Oh, a blast my pleasure. Here. Well, thank you so much. Uh, and real quickly, uh, it, do you have a social media presence where people can reach out to you just to say hello or, or thank you for this great book? Oh, totally. You can find me on Twitter and Instagram. It's just my name, S-A-M-M-A-G-G-S, -G -G or on TikTok over at Sam Writes A Lot. And I would, I'm always happy to chat. Thank you so much to Sam for joining us on Coffee with Kenobi. Again, be sure to purchase Star Wars Jedi Battle Scars wherever books are sold. There's also a great audiobook version 
as well. I want to thank everybody for listening, and I also want to thank the official travel partner of Coffee with Kenobi MEI and Mouse Fan Travel. For a no cost, no obligation quote, they can help you plan your magical vacation on the Galactic Star Cruiser, which will be taking a group on June 12th to the 14th. If you're curious about that, be sure to go to coffeewithkenobi.com slash mousefantravel and tell them you want to join Dan's there in the Coffee with Kenobi group. You can also use them to plan your trip to Galaxy's Edge, the theme parks, the cruise lines, Star Wars Celebration, or anywhere else that you like to travel. It does not have to be Disney related. By the way, when you do so and mention Coffee with Kenobi, you also support me and the show in the process. CWK Live is every Tuesday night at 7 o'clock p.m. Central Standard Time on our Facebook and YouTube page or just go to coffeewithkenobi.com slash live. For a spoiler-friendly Star Wars family, well, let's just try that again. For a Star Wars thoughts, comments, reviews, and opinions placed that is family-friendly and spoiler and drama-free, I swear I've done this before, Go to our Facebook group, which is the CWK Cafe at coffeewithkenobi.com slash community. The Coffee with Kenobi Alliance is the way to support me and get exclusive content not heard anywhere else. In fact, this show is possible because of the members of the CWK Alliance. Thanks to you, this podcast, Facebook Live, event coverage, and so much more can come to life and does thanks to your amazing support. Find out how you can help the show for as little as $1 a month by joining the CWK Alliance. You will receive access to CWK Pourover, exclusive weekly audio and video podcasts not heard anywhere else. Members of the CWK Alliance All-Star level receive a video edition of CWK Pourover and access to a private Facebook group as well. Plus, CWK Alliance Grand Master join me for a monthly live video call. Find out more at coffeewithkenobi.com slash CWK Alliance. And most importantly, 10% of your monthly contributions go directly to the St. Jude Children's Hospital. You can check out the website, coffeewithkenobi.com, for Star Wars news, announcements, reviews, videos, and so much more. If you want to reach out, you can email me, danzy at coffeewithkenobi.com. Connect with me on Twitter, at Mr. Zare, M-R-Z-E-H-R, or on Instagram, at danzare, C-W-K, and LinkedIn. Coffee with Kenobi is on social media, on Twitter, on Instagram, Pinterest, and TikTok. You can give the show a like on Facebook at facebook.com slash coffee with Kenobi. You can subscribe to the Coffee with Kenobi YouTube channel, or you can email the show feedback at coffeewithkenobi.com. Please take a minute or so to rate and review the show on iTunes, Google Podcasts, or Spotify. And if you like the new logo, check out coffeewithkenobi.com slash shop for mugs, hoodies, and t-shirts. I also travel all over the world to talk at your conferences, schools, businesses or organizations to help you tap on your strengths and bring out your very best you can schedule that at danzamedia.com and if you're starting a podcast or a blog i want to expand your brand you can also sign up there for a one-on-one conversation with me so i can help you get that process started and take your first step into a larger world thanks so much for joining me on a special coffee with kenobi there'll be several more shows this week as we get to the next episode of the mandalorian season three and wrap up season two of star wars the bad batch plus You've got all of the coverage of the upcoming Star Wars celebration. Again, if you're going to be there on Friday, April 7th from 4 o'clock to 5 o'clock, you can catch me live on the HoloNet News stage in room 14. Thank you so much, everybody. We will see you next time. Remember, this is a podcast you're looking for. This podcast is not endorsed by the Walt Disney Company or Lucasfilm Limited. It is intended for entertainment and informational purposes only. The official Star Wars website can be found at www.starwars.com. Star Wars, all names, sounds, and any other Star Wars-related items are registered trademarks and or copyrights of Disney and their respective trademark and copyright holders. All original content of this podcast is the intellectual property of Coffee with Kenobi unless otherwise indicated. This is the podcast you're looking for.